Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Steel City Knives and today we're going to be talking about this knife. This is a budget handmade Sheffield knife from Joseph Rogers. So let's have a look. So this is the box that Joseph Rogers come in. So like I say it's a hand built knife in Sheffield. This is their trademark granted in 1682. It's the star in the Maltese cross. This is the model number, the S90S. And uh, this was bought from Honey Haynes. So not long come, you just got it out of the box. When you buy a Joseph Rogers knife, if you'd like to pause and read this, you usually get this bit of documentation. So it just tells you a bit about the company, um, a bit about the care, and to sharpen. Which is good they put that, because this, I'm gonna just do a bit of a review on the knife, give you some specs. Uh, then I'll do a bit of history about Joseph Rogers and then I want to just talk about the knife community at the end So Okay, so you can skip certain bits and then if you just want to learn about the knife, then that's brilliant. You can just Switch off after I've done this. So this is a very budget knife. It's retailing for about £18.95 £20 somewhere around that region. So very budget very pocket friendly to carry and to buy so stainless steel construction, I couldn't find out what the stainless steel was, but um, very well put together knife really, I think, considering I've just got it as well. So the pivot needs cleaning out, but let's have a look at the walk and talk. Really snappy on the open, really snappy on the close. So in this range, they do a lot of blade, different blade configurations. I went for the clip point, they do a lamb's foot, they do a spear point, they do a pruner as well. So they also do one in a lock back with a clip point, um, which looks pretty good. Uh, obviously being a UK knife collector, I went for the slip joint. But So the, the specs on this is it's a 6.4 centimeter blade, which is a 2.52 inches. And then overall is 15.2 centimeters, 5.98 inches. Okay, and uh, my general take on this, it didn't come sharp, which is a big negative for me. Really disappointed with that. Uh, if you buy a knife, you want to be able to cut with it. So I'll just show you. It's uh, so that's a big negative. So I'm not really selling the knife, but let's have a look at the positives. So it's a very, very budget knife. Um, like I say, I bought this for under £20, so we're talking sort of Rough Rider um, sort of money, um, and it's made in England and hand-built. So, I mean, okay, sharpen it up, put your own edge on it, and um, then you've got a nice serviceable knife. Nail nick. Um, so, yeah, I, why did I buy this knife? So I bought this knife for this slim profile. Um, we're in summer now. And I didn't realize I actually really love these kind of knives and I have quite a collection. I might do a video just on these sort of slim profile knives. It pretty much disappears, doesn't it? So really pocketable. And um, when, when you're in summer and you've got shorts on and it's hot outside, you don't want loads of stuff in your pocket, So, but you want a knife. So it's ideal for something like that. So and you can't beat a Sheffield knife, can you? Let's be honest. So. Uh, another bit of information is Michael May has started doing this, these knives. Uh, they go for about £30, I think, but I'm hopefully going to pick one of them up as well. So, like I say, got a bit of a collection of these just on our own, and one that we've probably all got is probably, I've got the Army one as well, but th this sort of style, sort of the Alex, this Bantam, such a nice, slim profile. Um, probably more of a famous, couple of famous ones are, the Hegan Army sort of rolled and the uh, Duke Duke. But yeah, I mean, I, I love them sort of knives. I didn't realize how much until I started uh, <laughs> digging them out and thinking about this video. But yeah, so let's um, let's talk about it. So I've, I've, I don't want to put any negativity. All right, it's dull and it's not very good. Um, um, you know, no excuses for that. But let's talk about it. Uh, Joseph Rogers then a bit of the history so and this this is where you probably will want to buy a Joseph Rogers knife because I love Sheffield knife makers and they are probably one of the biggest and renowned uh, Sheffield makers uh, they've been going for a very very long time 
and they've done a lot of things um, in the cutlery historic uh, sense. They've um, created some amazing pieces that are still viewed and looked at in Sheffield today. So when I think of Joseph Rogers, I personally think of John Rogers, which was Joseph Rogers' son. So he had four sons. He named one Joseph. Unfortunately, he was blind, but he played a part in the company. But John Rogers um, sort of took the reins after his father died. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't have children, so it didn't stay within the name, but the, the nephews took over, but didn't have the Rogers names. So it sort of stayed in the family. It's owned by the Egerton Group currently, um, but yeah, it's steeped in history, and they were one of the biggest Sheffield companies in history. So um, I've made a few little notes. Um, so there's a place called the Cutler's Hall, which is a grade two listed um, building. Um, a, a beautiful building and um, I think they still house one of the they, they made two John I think under John's reign they made two amazing pieces that sort of came from Joseph Rogers um, and and I I if I had any good editing uh, skills I'd, I'd put some images on here but um, two of the knives were the year knife and the Norfolk knife so if you're into your knives if you like Games of Thrones as well and if you like that uh, the chair then check these knives out so the the year knife was a christian piece um and it was sort of made for like the christian era uh and it's absolutely phenomenal it's got something like 2000 i think yeah 2075 blades uh put into it and um it's I think both of the pieces were maintained throughout the years by cutlers of like brilliant cutlers, cutlers like Stan Shaw, uh, Ken Hawley, and people like that sort of maintained them and looked after them, and some of them added to them as well. So really cool history around sort of jo Joseph Rogers. So the Norfolk knife is this massive knife, and it, there's 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 I think there's that there's quite a few blades on that to be fair, and that was done in 1851, and you can still go and view it today. So, and the year knife was uh, done in 1822. So the, the, the year knife is sort of uh, not so much knife, but more of a cross with loads of blades coming out of it. Um, and we added, I think that's the one that got added to, I think got added um, in different uh, periods. I think 2000, they might have added one. Um, uh, and that might have been Stan Shaw actually that added that. But um, yeah, just that's, there's so much history around Joseph Rogers. And so many little stories as well. So one of them is that um, the Rogers hunting knife given to Buffalo Bill by General Custer uh, with a duel with sitting bull was from a Joseph Rogers. So, and they were, they were Sheffield's largest cutlery factory in the 1800s. So um, they're just steeped in history. Um, um, maybe one day I'll just do like a bit of a historic, um, decent... Uh, video on on Joseph Rogers because I, I I love the company I think they're brilliant um, I've got a few knives by them um, but yeah so their most famous place is the Norfolk sort of on Norfolk Street they had this massive building um, so but yeah just a brilliant company and um, I, you know steeped in steeped in history big time big time so okay so um, we've sort of gone through this beautiful um, sort of uh, so I'm looking forward to getting the Michael May one, seeing what that's like as well. Might do a bit of a comparison as well with the Joseph Rogers. So not a great deal in difference in price. Um, so, but yeah, um, I wanted to do a bit of a chat about uh, the knife community in general, to be fair. So obviously I just do YouTube videos for a bit of fun and um, to get my knives out basically and talk about knives. But um, so I'm sort of talking from a subscriber point of view here, but... Um, I just want to say congratulations to Thrifty Knifty for reaching 3,000 subs. Um, so a big fan of his and um, he's not been doing it very long. It's only been a few years, a couple of years, hasn't it? But what he's achieved in such a short period of time. And for a big knife geek like me, um, he's done some really... He did like some, two documentaries and they were brilliant. They were edited. They were so sleek on knives and... I've probably watched them myself so many times, but just it really well edited. It's like a, uh, just brilliant. Honestly, some of the stuff he does is amazing. And 
he's got so many videos out there and uh, yeah just a gr- uh, just a great guy and I, I i i feel like i personally know him now and i speak to him quite often and just uh just a funny good guy and he's a uh, heart of gold so he's always saying like yeah you know you ever need any help just give me a shout or really just a top bloke and uh congratulations mate well deserved um and then um big jay's knives um quite new on the scene um so he's just reached 1000 subscribers and um watch his shorts because he gives little sneak peeks of his collection and he's got an absolutely amazing collection and uh just uh, i you know really enjoyed watching his stuff and uh, he's got a similar sort of taste uh to a lot of us out there i think and just some brilliant knives and just a top bloke by the looks of it as well so he's he's made a few comments on the videos which i appreciate and um yeah just a well done mate for a thousand uh, subscribers and then um Slick Slices. So let's talk about people that are back on the scene. So we've got Slick Slices who's back on the sl- scene from being like <clears throat> having some health issues. Um, um, slick Slice is a bit of a hero of mine and, and being a Sheffield fan um, of, of Knives. Um, he's he's um, just on certain things like um, quality. I know when Ashley um, Harrison's dad uh, and Ashley took over uh, Arthur Wright, he he had a big part, I think, personally, in like the quality control and pushing for higher standards. And uh, uh, I just think he's a legend and um, uh, wish him happiness and health and really enjoying him back and his videos. So, um, and then uh, we've got um, slip, slip Joint guys back on the scene um, asking for ideas for content. So um, I bought a few knives under his uh reviews of videos and i really really used to love his channel so i'm glad he's back on the scene and then the big one for me um that left me giddy and excited like a little schoolboy again when i heard the news and i think it's sort of public knowledge now as well so um mesa hq is going to be on rj's lives uh rj knives lives on sunday so uh, unfortunately I have to work Sunday and I finish at seven o'clock and I think it, it airs here at half six and I have about a half an hour journey home so um, but yeah but I'm so buzzing I can't wait to see him on that and um, let's hopefully he was getting his channel back together or doing something uh, we'll see we'll see but I am so uh, happy. I've actually just bought um, a knife that probably, I think it'll be Mess- Mesa HQ approved. It's um, a Robert Class uh, single bladed sn- snake wood um, piece that uh, I'm looking forward to getting in hand. Only a little small, smallish, smallish uh, UK legal one, but um, yeah, no, can't wait, can't wait. So a lot of good things happening in the knife community. Um, really exciting and happy for everybody and it. Uh, just a great time to be a knife collector so yeah bit of a ramble bit of a talk about a budget sheffield knife and um please like and subscribe and um i'm really enjoying this and hopefully i'll get a few more out so i'll see you on the next one so cheers thanks for watching bye